to the exploratory data analysis course. Myself, Assistant Professor Vinay Prabhavalkar, Department of CAC AML at KITS College of Engineering, Autonomous Kolhapur. This is Unit 1, Lesson 2. The objectives of this particular lesson are understanding the significance of exploratory data analysis and the steps involved in exploratory data analysis. So, let us get started. Significance of exploratory data analysis. Now, here there are four significant points I am going to explore, explain to you. First one is cleaning and pre-processing the data. Now, when we have some data with us, there are few cleaning or pre-processing operations we need to do. We will see these one by one. Finding and rectifying missing values. Imagine the data set is present in a Excel file. Let us say we have several columns and several thousands of rows. Now, in this data, it is a possibility that there might be some missing values. So, basically missing values are nothing but the absent values. In terms of EDA, those are called as NAN values or null values. NAN stands for not a number and null stands for no value. So, these values are both called as missing values. So, finding the missing values and rectifying the missing values is a pre-processing task or a cleaning task. So, if we have some missing values or if we have some say uh, NAN values or null values or the blank cell, these values or the blank cell needs to be found out and then rectified with appropriate data. So, this is the task or this is the operation that can be performed with the help of EDA. So, this is the first cleaning and pre-processing operation. Second is the exploration of numerical variables. Whatever variables which are also called as features in a data set we have, those are needed to be explored. Let us say we have a feature called as percentage. Now, as we know, after the decimal point, the percentage variable can have multiple decimal points. The percentage can be expressed in terms of only the whole numbers or it can be expressed in terms of only one digit after the decimal point or it can be expressed in terms of two digits after the decimal point. So, when we have a numerical variable, we need to understand whether we are having a whole number or we are having a fraction number, wherein we are having a decimal point into picture. So, this is called as exploring the numerical variables. If we further go ahead, we can have a number which is having more digits after the decimal point, more than 2. So, whatever may be the number, we need to first of all identify, need to identify the number and then categorize whether it is an integer number or it is a float number or it is a double number. Now, when I say a double number, it is going to hold more number of digits after the decimal point, whereas a float will have slightly less number of digits after the decimal point, whereas an integer will not have a decimal point. So, exploring the variables or the features in a data set which are having the numerical values needs to be identified. This is point number 2. Point number 3 is exploring the categorical variables. Now, now I am going to talk about the category variables, categorical variables in the next video in depth. But for now, let me tell you different categorical variables that are present. So, there are two categorical variables, those that are considering the numbers and those that are considering the categories. So, there are binary categorical variables, 
there are ordinal categorical variables and there are nominal categorical variables. We need to identify each of these variables separately. Fourth is detection of anomalies and removal of anomalies. Anomaly as I said in lesson 1 can be an abnormal value. So, first of all considering the context of the data, understanding the context of the data and then making a conclusion that some value is an anomaly is very very important. Once you identify that particular value as anomaly, then there is a question of removal of that particular anomaly. So, here with some operations of EDA, we can detect the anomalies and also we can remove the anomalies. Last point is outlier detection and removal. Again, let me refer back to lesson 1 unit, uh, unit 1 lesson 1 video in that in the context of outliers, I have taken an example for age, age feature. So, if you go back and listen to that particular context, you will understand what is the meaning of outlier and after you understand the outlier with the EDA techniques, you can go ahead and detect them and then further you can remove them. So, all these things are possible with the help of EDA. So, cleaning the initial data and pre-processing the initial data is the first set of significance, the need of the EDA that we have. Point number two, feature engineering. So, this is the second significant feature or significant say need of exploratory data analysis. In feature engineering, we precisely talk about finding the relationship between the features. So, here we have multiple features and the features are either directly or indirectly proportional to each other. So, finding the relationship between these features is another reason why we are going to need the exploratory data analysis. Third, performing statistical analysis. Now, here there are two points. First is the descriptive statistical analysis and second is the inferential statistical analysis. Now, what do we mean by descriptive statistical analysis? In this particular type of analysis, the summarization of information is done that is without drawing any conclusions. So, just with looking at the content of that particular data, conclusions can be drawn and this conclusion uh, say, sorry summarization can be done without drawing the conclusions that is descriptive statistical analysis. In the second one inferential statistical analysis, we draw the conclusions from the exact data that we have. For example, if you want to find out the average percentage of students in a class, this is possible with the data that is present. So, considering the exact data that is present, the conclusions when they are drawn, here we are able to say that it is nothing but an inference that we are drawing from the data that is present. So, what we can say here is with descriptive analysis, we do not generate the conclusions, whereas in inferential analysis, we generate some conclusions on the data. So, this is the third point that is the significance or a need of EDA, why do we need EDA. And the last point, why do we need EDA or high significance of EDA is, is nothing but able to draw the visualizations. Now, visualizations are aids which actually help us to understand some trend to discover a pattern in the data. Let, let me refer back again to lesson number 1, wherein we were discussing about discovery of patterns. I gave you an example regarding the purchasing of raincoats and umbrellas. This is only possible in the rainy season. So, if we draw some sort of visualization, say let us say we draw a histogram of purchasing the raincoats and umbrellas will get a very high bar for the month of July, August, September. But 
during the months of let's say february march there the values might be zero so this is nothing but discovery of patterns and this is possible and here we are talking about the visualizations so not only we can draw some inferential descriptive analysis not only we can correct the data not only we can identify the outliers and abnormalities in the data we can also perform some visualizations as well so these are the four significant points why we need exploratory data analysis so the bottom line here is we can understand the data once we understand the data we can find out the mistakes irregularities in the data we can summarize make some conclusions with the data and finally we can visualize the data in the way we want so this is why the eda is significant to us now let's go to our second objectives that is nothing but understanding the steps involved in exploratory data analysis here in this figure we can see that there are six steps step number 1 is all the time going to be collecting the data from different sources so the step 1 is collect the data from its domain if you are talking about data from sports collect it from the sports domain if you are talking about a medical domain collect it from the doctors likewise so the step 1 in eda is all the time collecting the data and forming a data set once we collect the data and we form a data set we go to step number 2 in step number 2 we try to figure out how many columns that is how many features we have in a data set and how many rows or records also called as records we have in a data set further we try to find out what are the different types of columns and what are the different types of rows in the data set so that is step number 2 once we find out or once we understand the data then we go to step number 3 and try to find out the mean the median and the mode now these are the terms related to statistics we'll see these points in somewhat detail in the upcoming video wherein we will be talking about the normal distribution so just at this point let me tell you that these three points which are related to stats are only possible with those variables wherein we have numbers into picture so this is point number 3 we are talking about some stats information point number 4 a step ahead in this case we are talking about the variance the standard deviation the range of the data points so again these points are possible wherein the numbers are into picture but these points calculating the variance between variables calculating the standard deviation for a variable and the range of data points for a variable is a one step ahead than performing the mean median and mode for a variable so you are trying to find out more depth information with these data points so let me tell you that these data points are actually in a way related to performing the concept of feature engineering wherein we try to derive a relationship between the variables now once you derive the relationship between the variables the fifth step is nothing but to find out something called as skewness in the data now again this particular point will be captured when we will be going through the concept of normal distribution so at this point let me tell you skewness is nothing but the data is actually shifted to either left side or the right side it is not at the center so finding out the skewness is the next step that is present in exploratory data analysis operations and once all of these five steps are done we go to step 6 wherein we will be generating the graphical representations in these graphical representations you can see you will be able to draw different charts plots graphs so here are a few examples 
we may be able to draw a histogram, then a bar chart, a pie chart and so on. So, these are the six steps we need to follow when we are performing the exploratory data analysis. The bottom line here is firstly collect the data, second understand the data, third for better understanding use the stats operations like mean medium mode, fourth understand the data in more depth, try to find out the relationship between the variables, fifth try to see whether the data is having some sort of skewness or it is a normal standard deviation that we are getting with the data and lastly draw some graphical representations. So, these are the steps involved in EDE. With this we end lesson number 2 and in lesson number 3 we are going to go for two points once again. First is understanding the types of variables in a data set and second is trying to find out the cardinality of categorical variables. Thank you.